This is Radio TV Phono Nutting. Here we have a modern General Electric Chinese M666 toaster that almost burnt the house down this morning, and we're going to do an autopsy on it. Yeah, we want to get the Made in China on here. But like so many small appliances made over the past 20 or 25 years, when they're plugged in, they're not really off. Yeah, I mean, the idle may not be energized, but it's still still drawing current. And I believe this toaster is one such item. You see it has the automated buttons on here, computerized control or whatever. Well, anyway, my mother got home from the grocery store this morning, and I was in the other room, and she hollered that something was burning, smelt electrical, and then a few seconds later she said it was getting worse, and I came in there, and by that time she noticed smoke pouring out of this toaster here, so I unplugged it and took it outside. Now fortunately we were home. Had we not been home, the way this thing was progressing, it could have very well caught the house on fire, so, so it looks like I'm going to be replacing a toaster. Now, personally, I'd love to get an old vintage one like a USA-made Sunbeam or Westinghouse GE or whatever from the 40s or 50s, but my mother's kind of funny about stuff like that. I can, I can hear her now. Uh, well, I don't know where that's been. I'm not going to have something in here that I don't know what all's been crawling all over it and in it. And so I'll probably end up with another Chinese M666 toaster, but... Even with that, you don't know what's been on it in the Chinese factory that it came out of, but I'm still probably going to attempt to obtain a vintage one just to have here because we know the vintage one is not likely going to burn the house down from just being left plugged in. And the vintage one has made it this far. It'll probably keep going a few more decades. Now, on that note, if you have smaller appliances like this, just... To be on the safe side, keep them unplugged. I usually kept this toaster unplugged, but for some reason, I didn't unplug it last time I used it, and, and, and we know what happened. All right, let's bust this thing open and try to determine what actually went up in it. Now, this uses some oddball safety screws that I don't have a bit for, but, you know, that's what they make a drill for. We're not going to put this back together. We just want to get it apart. Yeah, I just love the smell of uh, burning plastic. All right, with the help of the drill, I was able to remove the tin can here, and there's the little electronic control board. All right, so far I haven't found what's actually burnt yet. I had the meter connected across the power plug. We have an open circuit when I push the lever down. We have 19 ohms, so that's obviously across the heating elements. All right, probing around in the toaster some more. Apparently this model is not technically energized when it's plugged in because they have a double set of contacts here where both sides of the line are switched. So apparently what happens is when you press the plunger down, it engages the contacts, which applies 120 volts to the heating element assembly. And then there's a tap on the heating element assembly to provide a low voltage to the control board. And then there are two other plugs on the control board. One plug provides a low voltage to this solenoid, which holds the plunger down. And then the other plug on the uh, control board goes to a set of relay contacts. So I have that little board in my pocket here. Let's see. Yeah, here's our little relay board. So what happens, press the plunger down and engages the contacts that applies voltage to the control board, which in turn applies voltage to the plunger to hold it down. And then whenever the control board senses the correct amount of time has elapsed for the uh, temperature setting that you're adjusted to, and the control board sends a voltage to the 
normally closed relay energizes the coil on that relay to open those contacts which removes the 120 volts from the heating element which in turn removes the low voltage from the circuit board which in turn removes the low voltage from the solenoid and lets the plunger pop up and when that pops up it releases these contacts that supposedly kills the 120 volts going into the unit itself. Okay, now let's check something very interesting here. I have my meter set to the 20 meg ohm scale. I have one side of the meter connected to the metal frame of the heating element assembly which is connected to the ground pin on the power plug. Now I'm going to connect to one side of the heating element and you can see we have a we have a resistance here of 2, point, two, two meg ohms and dropping. Now that's just what we're reading across on a meter but with 120 volts present that could very well that could very well cause some arcing and burning and smelling and smokeification. I'm sure what happened here the insulators, whatever type of insulating material they used to insulate the uh, heating element itself from this metal shield probably over time carbonized and became conductive and that's what's happening here. Now on the really old toasters I feel like they probably used a ceramic insulator to keep the uh, actual heating coil from touching the metal frame on the outside but and then that would be less likely to cause problems but even what I just showed you there's still an issue here you'll notice on this partial schematic I was starting to draw both sides of the AC line are switched so if this was open and this was open you know it shouldn't it shouldn't matter that there was some leakage between our heating element in the ground pin the shield ground we'll call it the shield ground that's what I'm used to calling it in an electronic repair so let's look at these contacts here and see if maybe one of them got stuck well I don't see any evidence of the contacts being stuck on this switch but there had to have been some path there possibly there was something in between the contacts like a breadcrumb or something or piece of a pop tart or something which are the two common things that I use in this they got lodged in between the contact and maybe carbonized and provided some kind of path and then me doing all the shaking and moving of this thing knocked it loose but at any rate there is definitely a resistance between the heating element and this metal frame here and that should not happen so yes, yeah, something, something had to have prevented the contact on the hot side of the line, which is black, from opening. And then, since we had a leakage from the heating element to ground, then that's obviously what messed up. And it's also obvious that this thermal fuse didn't open up or thermal circuit breaker, whatever it is, thermal cutout. I mean, what'd this thing have to do? Catch on fire to make it hot enough to open the thermal cutout? I guess so. But anyway, we kind of have an idea as to what happened here. So, unfortunately, I, I think another new Chinese toaster is going to be bought. My mother wasn't too thrilled about the idea of an older one being bought just for the reason I figured she wouldn't. She's afraid of what's been crawling on it and what's been in it and yada 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 and to me personally that wouldn't bother me none. Uh, I'd just clean it up really well and the heat from the coals would kill any germs that might happen to be in it. So I guess we'll be back at Walmart buying another one of these pieces of crap but if I see a vintage toaster at an estate sale and I'm sure I will 
I'm certainly going to grab it anyway because we know the old USA made stuff is a lot better than this Chinese crap but anyway yeah I apologize if I sound like I'm going in circles and not all with it today it's very cold out here in the shop and I need to dig out the Westinghouse heater that was made in the 1920s. I'm not worried about that thing catching anything on fire. And also, I wouldn't leave it unattended anyway, but the point I'm getting at is I've got an electric heater that's almost 100 years old and it still works. And I don't do cold weather well, so either I'm going to have to go dig the heater out or I'm going to have to I'm going to have to stay out of here until it warms up a little bit.